so inshallah to befriend them for that purpose to give da'wah to them and that should be the niyyah to give da'wah to them you know or even to take some benefit in business it's no problem alhamdulillah it's no problem to do that so uh, uh, inshallah jazakallah khair for that very good and very important question take two other questions from Ibrahim uh, Mustafa just Ibrahim uh, okay. first according the question of uh, Muslim unity and uh, a little bit of advice for those Muslim who cannot find a covering enemy but they have to come all the way to the mosque to find a Muslim to oppress hmm I think. <laughs> about Muslim unity, we could obviously talk, uh, give a whole nother lecture about Muslim unity. You know. But anyway, unity is based upon Hablillah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us, Fatasimu bi hablillahi jami'an wa la tafarku. Hold on together to the rope of Allah and don't be divided. The rope of Allah is the Quran, which is explained by the Sunnah. Unity is upon that. And everything which takes us away from that, whether it is your nation, nationalism is something in Islam that is really haram and it is jahiliyyah. And to whoever calls to nationalism, they call to jahiliyyah. And whoever fights for nationalism, fights for jahiliyyah. And whoever dies fighting for it, dies the death of jahiliyyah. Whoever calls to it, then they call to the hellfire, they will be the inhabitants of the hellfire, as the Prophet ﷺ said, even if they pray and fast and call themselves Muslim. Nationalism is something haram. It divides the Muslims. It is one of the inventions of shaitan, and it is one of the means the kuffar have used to disunite us and divide us. It is one of the most divisive philosophies that have ever been invented. And it is so sad to see the Muslim so proud to be of this nation, fighting for their nation, calling for their nation. This is one of the things that has divided us to the extent you see everywhere. Turkish mosque, Arab mosque, Bangladeshi mosque, Saudi mosque, Albanian mosque, Pakistani mosque, this mosque, everyone's got their own different mosque. You know? And they're not, it's not Masjid of Allah now, it's Masjid Albania, Masjid uh, Lebanon, Masjid Turkey. Subhanallah. And really, it's more than that, unfortunately, because you see the nationalism really obviously sometimes. This is something that has divided us. The other thing that has divided us is different sects and different groups. The Muslims have divided themselves into different religious sects, diverting from what Allah has said and the Messenger has said. And this is all haram and from kufr and from following the ways of the kuffar. Rather, we have to unite upon the book and the sunnah. This is the revelation. Allah did not reveal Islam to the people who invented these sects. Allah revealed Islam to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And it was best understood by the sahaba. That is the Islam and that is the true Islam. The other thing that is divided us are the groups as well. The parties and the groups. Unfortunately, we see many people, they try to make a group to, for Islam. Alhamdulillah. But you see, very soon it turns into my group, our brothers, our sisters. This is one of our brothers. This is one of our sisters. What's that supposed to mean? You mean the other one is not your brother and not your sister? And really you will find it's very strange that if someone in your group or your jama'ah is doing something bad, and someone in the other group or other jama'ah is doing the same bad thing, you say, Astaghfirullah, look at that. Look at them doing those things over there. But when your own person in your own group is doing it, you ignore it and overlook it. Why? Is it more haram when they do it and less haram when someone in your group does it? This is the evil of hisbiyah. This is also divided the Muslims. And this is something very, very sad that we see Muslims also very busy and so occupied in attacking each other instead of giving nasiha and advising each other in the nice way that we should. Muslims attacking each other, and even though there are so many non-Muslims that we have to give da'wah to, as you pointed out, not to take as an enemy in the sense that, you know, we don't want to think like that exactly. But these are people, they are sick, and they are misguided. You know, they need our help. This is how we should look at it, I think. You know, they are people who need our help. So, inshallah.
if we were busy worshipping Allah, you know, then alhamdulillah, a lot of these problems would not happen. There's a beautiful saying, I want to finish with that. This saying, saying of Hasna al-Basri, as far as I remember, saying of Hasna al-Basri. He said that when the people get sick and tired of worshipping Allah, they turn to argumentation. You know? So when you see the people arguing, 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 really you will find these are people they got fed up from ibadah. They get up fed up from the thing that will really change and reform the people and now it's just talk. So really we should concentrate on being worshippers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Can we let, let it go? Yeah. A brother, should we have a Muslim would agree for Muslims to regain the glory we once had, we have to submit to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through it and follow the sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Nowadays, given that the majority of Islamic countries, the highly educated, or let's say the rulers, they are not very religious in the eyes of many Muslims. Now, in the middle class, is powerless to make any rules. And we have a majority of Muslims, even in Muslim countries, and they hardly know more about Islam than barely train five times a day. Now, do you have advice? How should they go about uh, to educate yeah. others and to encourage uh, all Muslims into one herd which yeah. will worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Alhamdulillah? So, how do we go about it? Because the, usually, poor person is more religious than the religious person. So how does he go or how does he begin to make these changes? Alhamdulillah. The, the way is the way of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If we look and we see our situation, we should not think that it is worse because the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was one man and the people in Mecca who accepted Islam were very few. But the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has shown us the methodology of doing that. It's the, the life of the Prophet shows us how a few people who are strong upon their deen can change a great and make a great change. So we should not necessarily always think in terms of numbers and how many people. We need to think of quality, not so much as quantity. And that's what we need to concentrate on. That's why I say it starts with you and starts with me. If you want to change, the best place to start is with yourself. Start by changing yourself. So we need to learn about Islam. The first thing is, we need to educate ourselves. We need to study the Qur'an. We need to study the Sunnah of the Prophet We need to study the Sirah. We need to study Islam. When we do that, we will know how to worship Allah. Then we put that into action. Meaning, study is not only, oh, I know all these things now. No, but you must make the action. Yourself. And then you teach to your family, to your wife, to your children. And then you teach to others who are near you. So the best thing to do, inshallah, and the best way to learn is not really only just by reading books. To find someone who is alim, who is a scholar. And we know there's not many alims. But anyway, alhamdulillah, find someone who has more knowledge than you. Or the most knowledgeable person you can. And learn Islam benefit from them everybody can make mistakes but you will benefit from their knowledge and this is how and even if it is a little bit every day or every week or even every month this is the way little 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 alhamdulillah it seems to be a long 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 way but really it is the short way it is the short way it's the only way yeah yeah The thing is, yeah, the Sahaba, most of them couldn't read and write. Most of the Sahaba could not read and write. 
but they were the most knowledgeable and the most pious and the best of worshippers. And look, their small numbers in 70 years, they, they conquered what most of the known world at that time. So the issue is not even reading and writing or what we call education. The education is to be knowing the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the way to know the deen, to know the deen as it is taught by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as it taught by the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is what is important, you know. And this is what inshallah we uh, have to return to inshallah. Uh,